Hi everyone, my name is Clara Eve and welcome to another episode of Law for the Lay. Today I'm going to be interviewing outside a wonderful guy called Mark Lazarus. He's the kind of lawyer that you wish you had in your back pocket for every brilliant startup idea you ever envisioned. He's fun, he's enthusiastic, and he genuinely knows his stuff. So I first came across Mark Lazarus through the Beyond Billables podcast and I was so excited to hear just another lawyer that was just so full of energy and interested in hustling for change in the legal space. So I like literally pulled my car over on this side of the road and immediately sent him a LinkedIn message. I was like, please let me interview you. And thankfully he agreed. Mark is like a legal chameleon. He's done the whole lawyer gig. He moved over to London and became the sole legal counsel for Monster Energy Drink. He then became a barrister. Side note, barristers are the ones that like advocate on behalf of clients in like really tough subject areas. And they wear like the Harry Potter robes and a wig that kind of looks like a sheep, a well-groomed sheep. No disrespect though, barristers work really hard and their whole outfit thing is like part tradition and part like concealment of identity and all that sort of jazz. And now he's an enthusiastic coffee drinker wearing jeans and a good vibes attitude as he has his firm Lazarus Legal in Sydney working in exciting areas like fashion, fitness, startups generally and fast moving consumer goods. Can't wait to introduce you to the guy that's worn many hats and a wig. So, thanks everyone for joining another episode of Law for the Lay. Mark, also thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> He's gone from pretty much wearing corporate suits to a barrister's wig and robes, and now he's wearing sort of an amalgamation of jeans and sneakers. How does life feel right now, Mark? Uh, life is great. I, um, I've done full circle. I, um, I have worn wigs and gowns and robes as a barrister um, and suits and ties and I'm now wearing jeans and sneakers um, <laughs> and I'm still practicing law so it's good uh, I'm doing things on my own terms um, and I'm working in some pretty cool areas and uh, yeah it's good sounds like so much fun so did you always want to be a lawyer because I know that your your dad was one but was it something that when you were younger that you thought yeah I really want to get into that no. <laughs> um, I didn't wake up as an eight-year-old kid and say, oh, I want to be a lawyer, you know, uh, Why not? or a fireman <laughs> or a policeman. Or, um, but I think during the time in which I was thinking about my profession, um, it was a time when the word startup and entrepreneur wasn't thrown around like it is today. Um, and so the kind of uh, course that you would take um, if you wanted to be a success was lawyer, doctor, accountant, architect. Um, All and the I boring think, ones. Yeah, and I think because my dad was and is a lawyer, um, it's kind of the, the path that I just went into. Um, I don't think he was, you know, my, he was particularly pushing me to go into law. In fact, my mum was like, you know, going to singing or acting. I, I did drama for my HSC uh, as one of my subjects. What was your um, drama piece? Um, I actually, this is quite funny, um, <laughs> My uh, we did a group thing and then you did a, a, an, individual an individual monologue yeah. and my, my individual monologue was actually um, the final <laughs> the final courtroom scene from um, A Time to Kill by Matthew <laughs> McConaughey, um, which I used that final uh, scene, it was quite a dramatic, uh, uh, sad scene about yes. the, the rape. Um, and I brought in um, some of Martin Luther King's speech and I kind of amalgamated oh. the two together and did this, uh, that final courtroom closing. Yeah. Um, so even though I was kind of acting um, as, a, as a, you know, in a drama piece, I was acting as a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's a bit weird. <laughs> our um, year 12 drama pieces would have really been different because uh, mine was Barbie and I was talking to my teddy bear who was a therapist. So I think we really diverged on our school base. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that's weird. It is weird. Um, <laughs> but but so, probably not so weird these days. Actually. Yeah, um, so you pretty much, it was the, the legal grounding was there from day dot. Yeah, yeah. And um, maybe these days I would tell my younger self 
not to go into the law. Mm. But I think, that, no, with, in all honesty, the law, uh, having a legal degree, a law degree, is a, is a, is a great foundation. And, it's very useful. Um, you know, I love the fact that I'm a lawyer and it, it kind of helps me diversify into other areas and understand the, the workings of a business and life. And <laughs> Shit! <laughs> So our cameraman just fainted. No, not really. The, the wind actually just blew it over. Um, so carrying on, in the intro to this video, I noted that Mark was the sole legal counsel for the Monster Energy Drink in London. Yeah? Once upon a time, yes. Once upon a time. So we figured out that at the same time, at a brief period of time, when Mark was at one side of the world, kicking goals as legal counsel, I was also on the other side of the world being a monster energy promo girl. But I would still vehemently argue that Mark would look way better in a skirt than I would. <laughs> I met many, many monster girls in my time. Mm -hmm. um, but I never wore the skirt. Oh, Devo. <laughs> so, <laughs> but there were some, some monster events where I'm sure, you know, we uh, could have pushed other people to wear some, some skirts. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I was I was a, I was always the legal person, so I was always very much. Um, he wore a longer straight skirt, and, in straight, other words. Straight and narrow. <laughs> um, when it came to dealing with all the, the legal issues that uh, you thing. deal with in house. Okay, so in in the monster office, mm -hmm. was it somewhere where you drank a lot of herbal tea, or what was it like being a lawyer in monster? Um, uh, look, I had monster on tap twenty four seven. That is um, amazing. But. I have always been a, a big coffee fan, yeah. so I actually had a um, a monster fridge underneath my desk, uh, filled with monster and milk, and and, milk? and and an espresso coffee machine on top of my desk for me only. <laughs> so was it like um, half monster, and, half uh, milk? Or? You know, well, you know, every morning we worked in quite an industrial area, and the coffee in the UK and this you know where to go is not the best. So um, I would have to start my morning and then finish my afternoon with an espresso. Um, of course, I had Monster on tap um, and a, a, a number of different pro, uh, flavor profiles, skews of Monster. Mm. So, um, but you know, most of the time, you know, I was working. So You're just I wasn't, doing ordinary. I wasn't ordinary drinking, things. you know, numerous energy drinks during the day. <laughs> I was too busy working and, and dealing with various different issues and all across the yeah, world. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's it was fun. It was a it was a really fun place to be. Oh, sounds amazing. So then you went on to become a barrister. I did. What was it like the first time you put on your wig and robes? Fucking horrible. <laughs> um, you look so hot. It, 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 there was this almost this fear and dread. Um, it was like it was like a an accomplishment. Like oh my god, I'm a barrister. Shit, I'm a barrister. Yeah. Um, kind of a big as, deal. Yeah. It was. Um, it was like shit. I'm a barrister, and then it was like. It. I'm a barrister, <laughs> you know. Um, so um, it was um, it was a massive sense of accomplishment. Um, it's very difficult process, uh, lots of studying. Um, but at the same time, maybe there was a part of me at that point in time that knew that the bar wasn't for me mm. when I put that wig and gown on. Yeah. Um, it's a very uh, serious. Which is why job. after basically three and a half years, I decided to get out. Yeah. Um, and it was the best decision I ever made. Um, the bar taught me a lot um, in terms of running my own business, in dealing with people, um, uh, in becoming a better lawyer. Um, but it's a very isolated, lonely, a academic place. Um, I was never one for spending all hours of the day reading judgments and case law. Uh, I'm more about getting involved and immersing myself in the culture, lifestyle and ethos of the brand uh, and the client and getting to know them and what makes them tick. Um, and that's why um, I do what I do. That's why I love working in house, working across multiple different uh, uh, teams, marketing, ops, finance. Um, and that's why I guess I love doing what I do now with Lazarus um, Legal because I'm working with all kinds of startups and brands and you know, fast moving consumer good brands and doing things on my own terms. So, so plenty of variety. Lots of variety. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, Mark's going to explain the difference between a barrister and a lawyer because that's a question I actually got a lot as a law student. 
Very simply, the difference between a barrister and a lawyer, for those that don't actually know, is um, it's basically the same as being a GP and a specialist. So, um, you know, your GP is your jack of all trades kind of thing. Um, not to say that lawyers are jacks of all trades, I absolutely aren't, but you know, you're dealing uh, with the client, you're dealing with various different issues, whether it's commercial, whether it's corporate, whether it's litigation, whether it's property, whether it's family, criminal. Um, whereas bar barristers are more specialized in a particular area and they are the advocates of the court. So not to say lawyers can't um, run matters in court, um, but barristers are, that's what they do. They're experienced, they know the law, they know the acts, they know the evidence act, they know the uniform civil procedure rules, um, they know how the, the work, the inner workings of a court, um, and they know how to dissect a case uh, and work out uh, strategically what the best legal avenue or angle is to achieve a desired outcome for the client. Uh, a lawyer is more hands-on um, with dealing with the client and dealing with the, with, with the initial issues. Uh, when it becomes technical and it goes to court, that's when you um, engage, engage barrister. in ba a barrister. Yeah. Wow, sounds pretty intense. So the stuff that Lazarus Legal is doing now, it's obviously in a lot more um, fun and variety type space. Can you sort of explain what you're doing at the moment? Um, I am hustling like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, um, I am, I'm working with startups. I'm working with creatives across sports, music, entertainment, retail, fashion, leisure, tech spaces. I'm Sounds working uh, with um, uh, SME brands, small medium enterprises. I'm working with fast moving consumer good brands. Um, I want to work m with more fast moving consumer good brands, especially some of the bigger brands. Uh, fast moving consumer good brands are anything like your Cokes, your Unilevers, your Smith's Crisps, your Pepsico's. Um, Monster Energy. Drink. Monster Energy. Um, so it's a it's a it's a good uh, product uh, that's basically you know consumable. That's you know consumed everywhere. quickly yeah. and everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I deal a lot with FMCG brands. I deal with distribution agreements, supplier agreements, manufacturing, promotion endorsement, and sponsorship agreements, athletes, brand ambassadors, uh, dealing with IP, um, and dealing with, you know, and, and then that kind of moves me towards the startup space as well, because I'm dealing with startups that are launching new products, new services, um, and then they need assistance with everything that comes with the startup, so yeah. Wow, so that pretty much leads me to my last question for you, Mark. For anyone who is thinking of doing a startup or um, is in a startup and they sort of don't know where the, their legal obligations are or what sort of legal documents need to get rolling, um, what sort of advice can you give to them? Or well, not legal advice, but advisement on approaching um, a legal strategy. The first thing I would say to any startup, um, some startups at different stages. Some have money, mm -hmm. a lot don't have money. Um, and legal is on the very low list of priorities when it comes to spending money mm. in a startup business. Um, the problem is many startups uh, don't realize that they need or, or will need legal advice until it's too late. Um, and it's it's one of the ways in which startups fail um, because uh, they don't have the proper arrangements or documents in place with their co-founders, uh, they don't have the right intellectual property trademarks um, in place, they just don't have agreements in place whether they are leasing a premises, uh, whether they are taking on employees, whether they are looking to uh, expand their brand internationally. Um, all of these issues um, need to be dealt with and need to have a, a legal mind uh, or somebody that's capable at making decisions that are going to bulletproof the business. Um, so uh, legal fees uh, can be expensive, can be quite cheap in the uh, initial stages. There are many law firms out there that are willing to work with startups on uh, fixed fee arrangements, um, on retainers, on reduced hourly rates, on taking equity. Um, uh, and it's about uh, having that relationship with somebody that you know and you trust uh, that can help build and grow your business. Um, I urge any startup or any small business that doesn't have a lawyer um, to invest uh, a, a small amount of money initially to get legal advice to make sure they they bulletproof. And there you have it. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. If anyone actually does want to get in touch with Mark, you can find him on his website, which is Mark... Uh, it's Lazarus Legal, which is www.lazarusslegal.com.au. 
Um, and yeah, you'll find a lot of awesome, hopefully you'll find it awesome content. Um, our site is quite different to other law sites, law yeah. firm sites out there. Uh, we're not your typical suit and tie. In fact, we're, we're not a suit and tie. Um, we're, we're a startup and FMCG uh, firm, but we've got quite a number of lawyers uh, that work with us now uh, across property and conveyancing, franchising, um, Wilson Estate Planning and some of the boring stuff as well. Um, necessary, but um, But it's all necessary. Um, so yeah, check us out. Fantastic. And Mark's actually also developing his own YouTube channel as well called Hi. Lazarus Real. Yes, keeping it raw, real and personal. So stay tuned for some uh, content that I will be releasing uh, across various social media channels and YouTube. Sounds fantastic. Well, Mark, thanks for joining us. See you guys. Cheerio. Thanks, guys. Bye.